Some of the earliest thinkers in rhetoric argued that the study and practice of rhetoric involved five main parts. Invention, arrangement, style, memory, and delivery. And these more or less track the, the sort of the lifespan of the development of a speech. So we start off with invention. And invention here means coming up with ideas. So the, the first thing that's going to go into a good speech is good material. So invention means thinking through uh, all that content. And there are a number of strategies for coming up with good ideas, figuring out what is going to be useful uh, for an audience. If you're explaining a new concept, what do they need to hear? What are good examples for explaining that idea? So all these ways of coming up with good content. We start our study of public speaking with just that very thing. How do we come up with ideas well suited to public speaking? Once we've got those ideas, we need to think in terms of, well, how do we arrange these in a way that's going to be easy for an audience to follow along with? So on any given topic, how much background information do you need to give for this particular audience? How should you arrange the points? What's the sort of the narrative flow or what's the organizational pattern that should drive the, or the, those key ideas? How long should the introduction be? Uh, all of these are questions about how that audience is going to experience the time of your speech. And in many ways, arranging a speech is much more difficult than arranging an essay. Because in an essay, the audience controls that communique, right? If they forgot something or if they lost their place, they can go back. You know, they can flip the page back. But they don't have that as a, as a listener to a speaker. The audience member must listen to the speaker's flow of information in chronological time. So you, know, it, you have to make decisions about how an audience member can easily follow along with that information. So invention, arrangement, style. Here we're putting words to the ideas. So obviously some speeches are stylistically rich. So Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address would be a good example of this. And some speeches are more stylistically plain. So let's say a business presentation. Yet both of those have a style. And in fact, the decisions about style need to be worked in tandem with who that audience is and what that topic is. So you need to think strategically about the style you're using based on what's going to be useful for that audience. Right? If, it's, if it's too complex, without a doubt, everybody here listening to this has probably been in a presentation where the speaker um, had so much jargon it was impossible to follow along with. That's a stylistic choice, and often it's a bad stylistic choice to put in too much jargon in a presentation. So invention, arrangement, style, memory. So you know, here we're talking about memory as sort of remembering your planning, remembering your orientation. So for ancient rhetoricians, memory was tremendously important because in the Greek and Roman traditions, they would give these really long speeches, often in a very high, ornate style. But it remains important to study memory because a speech is spoken and not read. And if you don't practice your speech, you won't be familiar with it. And if you aren't familiar with your speech, you're probably going to read it to that audience. And, and this is a class in public speaking, not in public reading. And so you really shouldn't try to memorize your speeches word for word. In most cases, that's only going to exacerbate any fear you have about public speaking. But you should know the main parts of your presentation. And this often comes down to a matter of knowledge and practice. So you need to know that material well enough so that you can talk about the topic intelligently. That's sort of an invention category. But you also need to practice through the speech enough so that you know how to explain this topic to this particular audience. That's sort of arrangement and style. But all of that comes together by, by understanding practice, by remembering what is the orientation of your speech. So you don't have to read it off of a card to us. And then finally, invention, arrangement, style, memory, and delivery. Final part of study of public speaking is the one that people fear the most. right? And that's standing up in front of a, an audience and actually delivering the speech. But you know, one of the things to know here is if you kind of have all those other canons down, uh, the delivery part probably won't give you that many headaches. If you've got excellent ideas arranged clearly, spoken in an exciting and accessible style, and you know the content deeply, well, delivery is going to be less of a concern. But uh, delivery doesn't solve problems at the other stages, right? If you've got 
unclear ideas, poorly arranged in a confusing style, but good heavens, such delivery is probably still a bad speech, right? So we're going to take these canons of rhetoric, these principles of rhetoric. Yeah, by the way, when I say canons of rhetoric, that means canons as in principles, not canon like boom, boom, boom. So we'll take these canons of rhetoric as guides for composing speeches uh, that are good, creating speeches that are good. And because they're good, they can be delivered well. These very much work together. More to the point, these canons of rhetoric help organize our time. So you'll notice in each speech assignment, we follow the basic pattern. We'll start off with an overview to the assignment, and then we'll talk about invention. We do this in the informative speech, for example. Here's what the informative speech is. Here's some invention guides for informative speaking, how to figure out what you're going to organize the talk around, the evidence, the examples, the ideas in that talk. Then we'll move on and talk about arrangement for that particular type of speech. Then we'll look at style. What are some models for style for that type of informative speaking? How can you practice these informative speeches and find models of imitation for these informative speeches that are going Going to be good. And then, of course, for each speech assignment, we'll end by talking about the delivery concerns for that particular speech. So not only are we sort of moving from simple to advanced in terms of impromptu, informative, and persuasive speeches, but we're within each one, we're doing invention, arrangement, style, memory, and delivery, invention, arrangement, style, memory, delivery, and so on. So I come to public speaking from the rhetorical tradition. Although you could approach speech from a number of different traditions without a doubt. But this one has been refined over millennia. And it allows us to think closely about the various components that go into an excellent speech. So I sort of ended our discussion of rhetoric. And in the next lecture, we're going to turn our discussion to the fundamental differences between speaking and writing. The short summary here of the next two to three lectures is why most speeches uh, are better without a manuscript. So we're going to take that up in the next lecture.